Hello, this is Gary Pinnell, and we'd like to look at John chapter 9 today in our Bible study. So, <clears throat> if you have your Bible, you can turn to John chapter 9, or you can just follow along with us as I will show the verses as we go. The story of John is that he talks about the love of the Lord, but he mainly shows that Jesus is God, and that's how, that we need to have faith in him as God. So in John chapter 9, it says, Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned this man or his parents that he was born blind. Now, this uh, tackles the area of sin and why there is sin in the world, why there's death in the world, why there is disease, why is there sickness? And that's a good question. It's a very good question. And some people will just say, well, there it's a mystery and we don't know why that is. But that it's not true. It's not a mystery. We know from Genesis chapter 1 that when God created Adam and Eve, he created them perfect. He created all the animals perfect. There was no sin in the world. There were dinosaurs, but they weren't fighting each other. They weren't vicious. There were animals, but they weren't fighting each other. The, actually, even people did not eat meat, so they didn't kill animals to eat meat. They did, it seems, to clothe themselves, but not to eat the flesh of meat until after the flood. And then God gave permission for animals to be killed, to be eaten. So, how did this happen then? Well, because as you go to chapter 3 of Genesis, you see that there God had placed in the garden for Adam and Eve the fruit of the trees. They could eat all of the fruit of the trees except for the one tree that was the tree of of life and then well two the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and so they were to eat they could eat of all the other trees and so they did in those days they uh, would be eating fruits and vegetables and nuts of all kinds and so on but they did were not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and so God gave them a choice and when he gave them that choice man chose to disobey God actually God had given them uh, they were reigning they were to look over and take care of the garden they were over the animals to reign over them. But when they sinned, they gave that away. They gave it away to Satan. Uh, so then sin came into the world and death by sin, the scripture says. There was, after that, there was sickness and disease in the world. Now, God, uh, God allowed that to happen because of man's sin. There were thorns. And uh, when Jesus died on the cross, remember, there was a crown of thorns that was there. But because of sickness, is passed on down to us. And then there's the na sin nature that's passed on to us. And David said, <clears throat> In sin my mother conceived me. 
doesn't mean that it's sinful to have children. The Bible says in Hebrews that uh, the marriage bed is undefiled. And, um, but no, it, the sin nature is passed on when a child is born. So in sin, my mother conceived me. At, actually, at the moment of conception, because the person becomes uh, a person at the moment of conception. That's why we're so opposed, opposed to abortion because that's a life and that nature has been passed on sin nature is passed on that's why it says in romans 3 23 for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god and uh, it is wrong when uh, joel olstein and others like him say oh i think probably 99 percent of people are good no all of us <laughs> have a sin nature. We're born with a sin nature. That you, If you deny that, you're denying the word of God. Romans 3.23, like we just said, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All right. But then it goes on to Romans 6.23. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So there is a solution for the sin problem. And that is turning to Christ to save you. But you say, well, why do you bring all this out when it's talking about a man that was born blind? Because the apostles wanted to know, the disciples wanted to know who sinned, him or his parents, that he would be born blind. Well, obviously his parents had sinned. Obviously he didn't sin when he's in his mother's womb. Uh, being born blind. And so where did this blindness come from? Well, it came from the sin nature that is in man, then when man sinned, mankind, then the sin nature is passed on. But not only that, sickness and death and disease and thorns, all of these things are passed on because man sinned. Paul says that in Romans that even the universe is groaning until now. Now, so who sinned? And Jesus, in this case, is going to say to them, neither. All right. And we're going to see that right here. So Jesus uh, answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned but that the works of God should be revealed in him. So, yes, we have a sin nature. And yes, we all sin after we're born. And his parents had sinned just like everybody else, but not any different than anybody else. And when he was born, though, he had blindness. The genetic makeups of our body... The genetic makeup that we have is deteriorating. At the beginning, Adam and Eve were perfect. But then, as time went by, there are defects in our genetic makeups. But God allows certain things to happen so that he can, like this man born blind. He was blind for so long, but you know what? God is going to heal him to bring glory to himself to, so that people can see that God has power to overcome the evil in the world, the sickness in the world, the disease in the world. And so that's what he's going to do in verse 4. I must work <clears throat> the, uh, the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. <clears throat> now you might ask, 
well, why did he do that? Why did he spit and make a, a, a muddy uh, concoction, a muddy uh, mess uh, with that spittle and then mix it together with the dirt? And uh, be honest with you, I don't necessarily have the answer for that. I can give suggestions. Uh, we were made from the dirt to begin with. God made us of the clay of the earth, the, the sand of the earth, and however you want to look at it. And then he formed us from that. But these, this man's eyes were not formed correctly. They were formed incorrectly. And so Jesus is going to make them perfectly well as being as a baby, being born with beautiful, wonderful, holy, uh, holy uh, totally whole eyes with everything working right. And so Jesus did that. And he said then to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. Okay, so it's interesting that Pool of Siloam, the name itself means sent. Well, Jesus sent him, said, go, and now wash out your eyes. So he went, washed, and came back seeing. All right, so there we have water involved. The Holy Spirit is pictured as water. It's pictured as dove in other places, but mainly as water. Therefore, the neighbors and those who previously had seen that he was blind said, Is not this he who sat and begged? And some said, Well, this is he. Others said, He, he is like him. He said, uh, I am he. <laughs> Therefore, they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He answered and said, A man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and I received sight. And then they said to him, Well, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought him, who formerly was blind, to the Pharisees. Now it was a Sabbath. Uh-oh. Do you think it was an accident that Jesus did it on the Sabbath? No. He did lots, lots of healing on the Sabbath. <laughs> okay. For a purpose. When Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also asked him again how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Therefore some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. Others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was a division among them. No. Yes, there was a lot of stuff you weren't supposed to do on the Sabbath. There was a man that was picking up sticks after, right after Moses had told them not to do any work on the Sabbath, and he was stoned as an example. Uh, they were supposed to be careful what they did and not to do any of their regular work on the, the Sabbath. In fact, they got, uh, when they were getting manna from heaven, the man that came down and there was enough on Friday, they they didn't have to pick up any manna on Saturday because the Lord made it last through the Saturday. In fact, somebody went and did that. And uh, they were in trouble for doing that. Well, but where in the Old Testament, show me please, where does it say you can't heal anybody on the Sabbath? That's all Jesus did. He's a miracle working God, just like he created eyesight to begin with. He created our bodies with trillions of cells. 
and all those cells working together to make us. Uh, it didn't happen accidentally. That's a lie of Satan. I will tell you that uh, I think it's better to pronounce uh, evolution as evolution. And you say, whoa, that's weird. Uh, no, in England, Australia, uh, Canada, <laughs> and other places, they pronounce it evolution. So I'm uh, encouraging Americans to, and other people that speak our English to pronounce it as evolution. Why? Because Satan has blinded the eyes of people with evolution. There's a spiritual blindness in the world today. And it's very thick. It's very prevalent. It's in lots of people. It's uh, Satan has deceived people to think there is no God. Everything just happened by accident. Our bodies came about by accident. The universe was in a little dot and then a, like a dot on a piece of paper as they teach. And then all of a sudden there was an explosion and all the planets came out and everything. Well, where do you think that lie came from? It came from Satan. We're going to see he's the father of lies. And so he's deceived people. And it wasn't an accident that this man saw. No, Jesus did it. But now they're not interested in seeing. They're not even glad to see that this man can see. They, they don't care about that. They don't care about the man. They care about keeping the rules and rules that they have made up. There's no rule about you can't heal on the Sabbath. And by the way, uh, God is in a sense doing work. Jesus says that his father always works. But how much work do you think it takes God? <clears throat> we think of it as work. But when he created the universe, when he created you and I, when he created the animals, when he created the um, bacteria, by the way, there are good bacteria too, and all those cells in our body. How much work was it really hard for him to do? No. And there's nothing in the Old Testament that says that you can't heal on the Sabbath. So that was something that Jesus did that was a miracle, <clears throat> and it was right, and it was good. And it was helping this man. It was not something bad, as the Pharisees said, and said that he Jesus was a sinner because he did that. No, nope, they need to sh show me the passage in the Old Testament that says you can't heal on the Sabbath. But they've made up rules besides the rules that were in the Old Testament. So then the people are saying, how can man who is a sinner do such things and the man that was healed was saying the same thing and then uh, <clears throat> there was a division among them and there is a division today those that believe in christ and believe what he did was perfect and good and, but then there's those that disagree and they don't believe okay they said to the blind man again what do you say about him because he opened your eyes he said he is a prophet, you know, at this point. He doesn't know. He probably hadn't heard anything other than uh, uh, about, maybe a little about Jesus, but didn't seem to know hardly anything. But the Jews did not believe w w uh, concerning him. Remember, John is explaining uh, to the Gentiles mainly uh, what Jews were like uh, at that time because this is written in about 80 A.V., all right, in there, that, that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him who had received his sight. So they didn't even believe that it was a miracle that had taken place till they called the parents, and they asked them, saying, uh, Is this your son? who you say was born blind, so they didn't even believe the parents. He says that uh, they said that he was born blind. And the others had seen him and known that he was born blind. How then does he now see? Ah, they're going to trick him because if they say Jesus, then uh, 
they're going to be in trouble. His parents answered them and said, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But by what means he now sees, we do not know. Or who opened his eyes, we do not know. He is of age, ask him. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews. They couldn't even tell the whole truth because they knew that the Jews would kick them out of the uh, synagogue. For the Jews had agreed already that if anyone confessed that he was Christ, the Messiah, he would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So they again called the man who was blind and said to him, give God the glory. See, they didn't want him to give the glory to Jesus, but Jesus is God. So uh, it's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, three in one. We know that this man is a sinner. So they had already de decided that Jesus was a sinner. Uh, he's not God. He answered and said, whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. And then they said to him again, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? How angry and wicked can you get? that you're upset that somebody was healed. They would be happier, I guess, if he had been blind. Uh, that's just the way they felt about it. He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Ooh, what a jab at them. <laughs> and then they reviled him and said, you are his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spoke to Moses. As for this fellow, we do not know where he is from. He didn't want, they didn't want to know. The man answered and said to them, why, why this is a marvelous thing. You see how he's saying it? Uh, <clears throat> that you uh, do not know where he is from, yet he has opened my eyes. All right, now, uh, being a little bit uh, sarcastic and cynical here, right? Uh, facetious with them. Now we know what God does. We know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. See, he's teaching them. He's un, uh, he's not learned like they are. He hasn't been to college or university, but he's figured this out. And God used the man to heal him, right? Since the world began, it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. Yeah, look in the Old Testament. I don't see that anywhere. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered and said to him, you were completely born in sins. And see, that, so they're saying that the reason he was born that way is because he's a sinner and, and, uh, and uh, his uh, blindness was probably because of that and so on. But... And are you teaching us? And they cast him out. Uh, Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you. Then he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. Now, what a difference. Uh, can you imagine the traumatic experience for this man? And one day went from blindness, not being able to see since he was a child, a baby, 
and now being able to see perfectly. And not only that, being harassed by the religious leaders and, uh, and then coming to actually see Jesus with his own eyes. He didn't see Jesus right away uh, until at this point. And he's so excited and he falls down to worship him and praise him. He knows that he is the Messiah. He knows that he is Lord and Savior. And so he worships him. And that's all God wants us to do. Don't be like the Pharisees. Don't be like uh, evolutionists that can't even believe that anything about creation, that God created us, and they believe a lie. And they're blind. They're blind spiritually. You see how... Uh, these things, the miracles that God or God is doing and Jesus is doing here, they have a significance and a meaning. Um, so then uh, we see here in uh, verse uh, 33. No, down here a little bit further, sorry. Okay, so they cast him out. Uh, and then he said... Verse 38, then he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. And Jesus said, for judgment, I have come into this world that those who do not see may see. So the first time he came, uh, not judging the world for their sins at this point, but what he's doing is judging sin itself by his death on the cross and taking away the sin of the world as he will do uh, in a short time before this. But he is judging sin and giving people an opportunity to believe in him. The religious leaders, by and large, did not believe in Jesus. And because they didn't, they are lost in their sins. They're eternally separated from God if they did not receive Jesus as the Messiah, as the Messiah Savior, and that those who see may be made blind. And so those that think they see, <laughs> uh, not believing, they're really blind spiritually. Isn't that interesting how God uses a miracle like this to explain uh, something else? The, uh, as we've talked about before, Everything in this world is like on two tracks. There is uh, one track as a, a railroad tracks. Uh, on one side, the one track is the physical, and you think about that. But if you look uh, in the physical, things like this, blindness, well, it could be referred to physical blindness, could be spiritual, uh, thought of as the spiritual blindness we have. There's the, the two tracks. And so you have one side uh, of the track is the physical. The other side of the track is the spiritual. And that's, if you look at the physical, you can learn things about the spiritual. All right. And if you look at the spiritual, you can learn things about the physical. And that Jesus is saying here that they are blind, uh, those who do not uh, receive the message of salvation and do not receive that Jesus is Lord and God and Savior, that he is the Son of God. Then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him, Are we blind also? <laughs> yeah, you're blind. Uh, you're blind spiritually. Jesus said to them, If you were blind, uh, you would have no sin. All right. Uh, but now you say, we see, okay, if you would uh, realize that you are in need of a Savior, and that you are in spiritual blindness, then you, would, you could get the help that you need, and I would heal you. Uh, uh, by your, you would be saved spiritually, and you'd be able to see spiritually. But you already say, we see, we don't, we don't need any help. We don't. We're already right with God. Well, no, you're not. And so, therefore, your sin remains, Jesus says. And so it is. Um, the spiritual blindness in the world, the only way it can be solved 
and healed is to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And you won't understand things spiritually, a lot of things, until you're born again. And so I challenge you, if you do not know Christ as your Lord and Savior, this very minute, this very day, you can say to him, I admit I'm spiritually blind. I am a sinner. I need salvation. And he will save you. Invite him into your heart and life. That's why he died on the cross for you, to save you and I. All right, our time is up. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, God, for this time that we've had together. I pray that any that are listening to this message, if they do not know you as Lord and Savior, they will turn to you and receive you, realizing that you died on the cross for them. You took away the sins. If they will only believe in you and receive you and turn from their sin to you, and so we thank you, Father, that you did the, sent your Son to die for us and rise again. And there's salvation in the name of Jesus Christ alone. So we thank you and we pray that all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right. The Lord bless you and we'll see you, God willing, tomorrow.